Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, um, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. I'm a soldier, Yerwanathan, coming out of Sakari, Toronto. Going to be going over a quick lesson today. Um, topic is Ezekiel chapter 37. So we're going to be breaking down the chapter. You know, nothing too too crazy, just, you know, going over precepts, um, basically helping edify with, with other precepts you can go to to help explain what each verse means um, in Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. So we're going to start with that. Um, what, what, what inspired this was, you know, obviously the debate that um, Chief Priest Alizar had with so-called Dr. Michael Brown. You know, I was going to go over a different topic, but that debate inspired me, you know, to kind of touch on Ezekiel 37, you know, um, and going over it will prove, um, it will prove a lot and show a lot how, you know, who the true children of Israel are, and it'll disprove who are not the legitimate children of Israel as we go through and see, okay, who does this fit? Who does this match? Right? It's, 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 uh, evidently clear <clears throat> so without further ado let's get right into it this is ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 1 it says the hand of the lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones so ezekiel is seeing um he is in the spirit and the lord shows him a valley full of bones right obviously that is metaphoric or symbolic for um the house of israel where we're dead you know spiritually uh, and physically and our bones are laid out in this valley so he sees it verse two and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered O oh, Lord God, thou knowest. So he's saying, can these bones live? Can your family, your brothers, can they come back to life? And Ezekiel says, you know, only you know, Yahweh. Verse 4, and again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. All right. So right away, this verse here. I will cause breath to enter into you. That that rings a lot of precepts in my head um, because breath is significant. When we're reading the scriptures and we see, let's just go straight to it. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 because that's where we see in the beginning, um, the first time that is mentioned the breath of the Lord entering into Adam. So Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So here's a, a verse that explains that the most I had to breathe into Adam. Now we can go through precepts and see exactly what that breath is. You know, Christian church, you know, Islam, these other religions can't go through this Bible precept upon precept and even know what the breath is. All right, so let's hold that. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra chapter 3, <clears throat> real quick, in verse... Five, I believe it says and gave us the body unto Adam without soul which was the workmanship of thine hands and did breathe into him the breath of life and he was made living before thee so it's like that's just a precept con confirming what he um, had already done so let's go to the book of <clears throat> wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse 24 all right, watch. It says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. Verse 25, For she is the breath of the power of God, and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can no defiled thing fall into her. So it says wisdom is the thing that he gave. That is the breath of the Lord. So... Here's a verse telling you what exactly it is. Now, what is wisdom? All right. Uh, 
long story short, without going through all the precepts and the wisdom of Solomon and Sirach right now, let's go to a, a concrete precept that tells you straight up what wisdom is. And then now they give us more understanding what he gave to Adam, the breath of life, and tying it back into Ezekiel, what that thing is that is going to be breathed into the house of Israel. All right, Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do so in the land whither you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So it's the commandments. All right. It's the commandments that Ezekiel is prophesying that the wind is going to enter into these bones. Let's go back to it. So that was Ezekiel 37 and verse. Oh, so lucky. Ezekiel chapter 37 and verse 5. I'll read it again. Thus says the Lord. I'm God into these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. See that? So what's the what is he what's this breath he's gonna give to the bones of the house of Israel? It's this it's the law, statutes, and commandments. Alright? Uh, if you're reading in context and you back up a chapter, right? Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness, from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes. See that? Just the very chapter previous, prior, it tells you what he's going to do. It tells you how he's going to bring these bones back to life. He's going to um, put his statutes in you and cause you to keep them. Uh, verse 27, I will put my spirit within you, cause you to walk in my statutes. You shall keep my judgments and do them. All right? So again, this is just precept upon precept. You know, hope, edifying the body. Black Hispanics, Native Indians out there, how to go through this chapter, Ezekiel 37. We, we see the imposters using it, trying to prove that they're the, the real Israelites. Christians use it. Um, they regurgitate that false breakdown, trying to use this to show that Amalek, Esau, um, are the real Israelites. It's it's completely bogus. It's false. All right, so we're just going through it today. Again, precept upon precept. Lord willing, edify and give you that understanding. So, again, we just read um, what it means and how the Most High is going to give you life and what exactly it is. All right. Let's read verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. You already know what that is. And you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. So now, um, let's go to... So it says he's going to put sinews on us, and cover our bones with flesh. Why? What happened? All right, what, what happened to the house of Israel that there, there's no flesh, there's no uh, ligaments and, 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 and meat on their body? All right. Again, there's a precept to show that. Let's get the book of Micah, chapter 2, and verse 2. Micah 2 and 2. That's no, not 2 and 2. Micah chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, and I said, here I pray you, O heads of Jacob, and ye princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment, who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them? They break their bones and chop them in pieces, as for the pot and the flesh within the cauldron. Then they shall cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. So there's, there's a, again, this precept explaining to you that the heads of, so not only have the heathen, um, you know, persecuted us, 
robbed us, spoiled us, oppressed us, but the heads of our own people, right? So-called elders, so-called rulers at the time, right? Historically, and now our people destroy us. They're Christian pastors, you know, that old man, uh, you know, up the block who's been there for years, you know, giving out false information to children, telling them not to come back to the commandments, but rather go to the Christian church, whatever it may be. All this stuff that has been plaguing our people. Here we have an example of our own people destroying us. And as it says, plucking the skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones. It's not it's not literally it's talking about. It's talking about spiritually, right? And how do you do that? By not giving them the commandments. All right, so that's a precept to explain what, what it means because he says he's going to put sinews back on us and, and, and flesh. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back to Ezekiel 37. That was verse 6, so let's continue in verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up, upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them so the the spiritual resurrection is still happening all right a little by little piece by piece and then the last thing to come into them is the breath which is the you know those commandments it says verse 9 then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus says the lord god come from the four winds o breath and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Why? Because our people were scattered uh, to the four corners of of the earth. All right, predominantly in Babylon, aka America, but of course, there's a remnant scattered across the entire earth. Verse ten. Um, so I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Now, the book of Revelation picks up on this in the 11th chapter, so let's go there. All right. So this is the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 11. And it reads, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So this is speaking about the uh, context as the two witnesses. Now, we know the two witnesses is um, Elijah and Moses, but now Elijah and Moses represent something bigger than just themselves, right? They represent that ch the, the, the church right? or the body of Yahweh Shai, um, which, which is the Israelite congregation in, as a whole in the truth, right? So that's what they represent. That's why it says there was an exceeding great army and they stood upon their feet quoting what we just read in Ezekiel 37, all right, so it's interesting how, again, you know, write these precepts down because this is how, according to the Bible, you know, you break down scripture. Christian, your pastor is never going to break it down to you this way. He's just going to say, oh, Ezekiel 37, yeah, the so called Jews, they fulfilled that. They went back to the land, blah, blah, blah. Right? Because it says, there's a verse that says, we'd go back to the land. So they interpret that to say, well, the Jews went back in 1948. Ignoring the rest of the verses that tells you what we're going to do in the land, which they are not doing in the land currently. All right, so that was verse 10. Let's get to verse 11. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So he's telling you what this is. This is the house of Israel. Is the house of Israel literal bones in a valley? No, that's not what he's talking about. Are our bones in valleys? Sure, but that's not the point of the, of the prophecy, right? This is the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. Now, this is very interesting. This is a good key verse to help us unlock a certain understanding in the New Testament. But we're going to come back to verse 11. All right. Um, we're going to come back there. It says our hope. Sorry. Our hope is lost. It's lucky. It says, behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, 
I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and ye shall live and I shall place you in your own land, which is in the land of Israel, Jerusalem. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me, uh, sorry, came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another stick, um, one to another into one stick. They shall become one in thy hand. So, so we're going to go over this quickly, this breakdown. But this is, it's not really milk, but it is something you, you learn fairly quickly. At least I did coming into the truth. I learned fairly quickly that, you know, the house of Israel split up into two kingdoms. Um, and then, you know, one, the northern kingdom was taken away. And we're awaiting for the regathering of the house of Israel to come back together, which makes up um, some of the Gentiles in the New Testament. The Gentiles in the New Testament are Israelites in general, could be southern, could be northern, that have lost their identity, been Hellenized, you know, fallen to the custom of, of the Grecians, Romans, etc., and have just, you know, um, been spiritually, as it says in verse 11, cut off, right? So now that ties into this here. So let's get some precepts to prove that quickly. Because um, it says, take Judah and take Israel, um, you know, Joseph, Ephraim, and bring them into one stick. Uh, you know, but t I thought, you know, the house of Israel was one. Well, no. Uh, let's see when they split up. And this is just, um, this will be quick. So let's go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse... Let's start at verse 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, for thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen, which is Benjamin. All right. So he's talking to Judah. And he's saying, I'm going to give you one tribe, Benjamin, and you will be a kingdom. All right. Let's keep going. So let's read verse, um, <clears throat> verse 31. And he said to Jeroboam, take thee ten pieces. And so now this is the other son of Solomon. Rehoboam, he was stuck with the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, obviously Levi, uh, that Rehoboam, now Jeroboam, he's speaking to Jeroboam. And he says, take thee ten pieces from the, uh, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake. So the other ten go to the north, Samaria. All right. It says, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because they have forsaken me and have worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, and the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in my eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments as David his father. Uh, let's read verse um, 35. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. So because of the sins of Solomon and the wickedness that was going on at that time, the Lord split up the kingdom. All right. Let's get another couple precepts, just some quick ones. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 14. And it reads, <clears throat> Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands, 
that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. See that? So the brotherhood between Judah and Israel was broken. All right? That bond that they had as the, as the 12 tribes of Israel that was broken. That's the that's why Ezekiel said that that stick needs to come back together. All right, where we were actually in 1 Kings 12, we can also see the same thing. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 16. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house. David, sorry, thy own house, David. So Israel departed to their tents. So once they seen what happened in, in chapter 11, Israel was like, well, what inheritance, inher um, so like inheritance do we have? Like, let's just get out of here, basically. All right. Now let's get one more. I like this one here. So let's get the book of <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 15. It says, Son of man, thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord, for unto us is this land given in possession. So he's telling um, southern kingdom, is telling northern kingdom Israel to get out of here for this land is given to us so that's a that's a showing you again there's a difference between southern kingdom and northern kingdom Samaria and the, the you know the brotherhood was broken and they had to be brought back together all right so um so those are just some precepts to show that obviously there's more but for time's sake let's get back to Ezekiel 37 um, so we broke that down with that with the stick. All right. Um, let's go to verse 19. Say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, the tribes of Israel with his fellows and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. So see that? Now watch this. This is where Christians and so-called Jewish people, or so-called Jews, they, they use this prophecy incorrectly to show that they're the children of Israel. Why? Because it says, So take you from among the heathen. And verse 22, I will make them... One nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. Now, without going into the facts of what happened in 1948, that supposed prophecy fulfillment, you can see in 19, I believe, 14. Don't, uh, you have, you have to, I'll have to double check the year, but I'm pretty sure 1914. That this has been a plan in the making for a long time to try to bring the so-called nation of Israel back as a state. Um, it's been planned out long before World War II. Um, but the point, not to get too much into that, I just want to deal with the scriptures right now. And if we, if we continue reading, they do not fit this. So, again, according, like, like Chief Priest Alizar said, a.k.a. the Grilly Hebrew, according to Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. If they're claiming they they're fulfilling prophecy, or this is fulfillment, or we have the breakdown, but they're going against the law of the prophets, don't listen to them. All right? So let's keep reading. So it says, I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountain of Israel, and one king shall be king unto them all. Watch. So now, when they returned, were they given a king? Was that one king, a king to the, all 12 tribes of Israel? Do they say... Reuben is in the land? Do they say Gad is in the land? Asher, Naphtali, Issachar? Do they say that? No. They say Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They call themselves the Jews, right? They don't claim to have all 12 tribes. Dr. Michael Brown said it in the debate when, when he was being asked questions by really Hebrew. He said, well, not all the tribes have returned yet. Well, that's not fulfillment of prophecy because we just got done reading all 12 tribes would be one. And when they try to say, oh, well, 
you know, prophecy takes time. No, no. That is, you're applying a false logic into the text that's not there. It says they become one and then they return to the land. Not some return to the land and they slowly become one and they, they host gay pride parades while they're in the land and they go they go to war with the other nations and the nations shoot missiles at Israel. No, nothing like that is in the prophecy here. You're supposed to be one, given the statutes and commandments, which is the new covenant, Jeremiah 30, 31, 31. You'll be untouchable as a nation. No nation can, can even think about going to war against you or even prevailing or killing any of us. And then, you know, we'll be safe in our land. That's totally opposite of what the so-called Jews are doing. All right, so let's keep reading. Uh, verse 23. Neither shall they defile themselves anymore with their idols. Are there idols in the land of Israel right now? Are there abominations being committed by the so-called Israelites? Amalek, the imposters, yes. So do they fulfill this? No. It says, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, there's transgressions in the land, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, I will be their God. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. They don't have a king to this day. They don't have that one ruler ruling over them from the seed of David, which this verse here, um, so now, Here's another another angle um, to, to, to use this in your arsenal to defend against, for example, OT onlys. So when they go to this verse, they're going to go here and say, well, David's going to be the king, not Yahweh Shai or who you call Yahweh Shai or Jesus. So how you cut that quick is you go to prophecy. We'll go to more prophecy. All right. So the book of first. No, Salakia. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7, and verse 12. It says, now this is God speaking to um, David. It says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. So it doesn't say, I will set up you after you. It says, I will set up thy seed after thee. And I will, um, sorry, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his king, not your, not to say it's not the kingdom of David, but that this proves he's not talking about David, because he said, "I will set up your kingdom through him," right? Um, and I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. I will establish his kingdom, Yahweh Shai, and he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father; he shall be my son. And if you commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. Now, this is talking about Solomon. And then through the spirit, um, Yahweh Shai, who is the regeneration or reincarnation of Solomon. All right. That's a different breakdown in itself. Um, if you type in Sakari, um, regeneration, or, um, yeah, regenerate that. If you type in Sakari, regeneration, or reincarnation, that breakdown of how Yahweh Shai is Solomon should be there all right let's keep going verse 25 and they shall dwell in the land that i have given unto jacob my servant wherein your fathers have dwelt they shall dwell therein even they and their children and their children's children now what key what can we use this for, uh, for? verse 25 what's commonly taught amongst the christian church what's commonly taught is in the kingdom of heaven because this is what we call Kingdom connotative scripture, meaning it's describing a future event, um, the future event of the kingdom of heaven and describing what's going to be there, how it's going to be, etc. This is saying our children's children will be there forever and dwell safely. So our, it says, let me read it again, 25. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein. Even they and their children and their children's children. That's, that's, that's kids. You're having kids. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. And we're going to get a precept quick. Forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Let's get a precept. 
is just um, just another witness that in the kingdom of heaven we will be having children. This is the book of Jeremiah 32 verse 38. Uh, let's start at verse 37. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries whither I have driven them. So, and, and this is another cut. See, again, going over the chapter with the precepts cuts a lot of false doctrine. And that's the point of this breakdown today, this lesson. It's a powerful, you know, in Sakari, we believe that prophecy, with prophecy, you can destroy any doctrine that is contrary to the word and build up any doctrine that the prophecy teaches because according to the book of Isaiah 55 and 11, prophecy does not come back void, right? Second Peter 1 and 19 says we have a more sure word of prophecy than anything else. So prophecy always stands. So any doctrine that needs to be tested, it can be, if it's, line, if it's um, compared with prophecy and it doesn't add up, you can throw it away. Right? It's, it's such a simple remedy. It's just, it's, you know, so easy. But um, so many people who, you know, Christians particularly who claim to know the Bible, they don't see that. Um, it's like you're not to go on a rant. So verse 37, Behold, I will gather them out of all countries, whether I have driven them, so-called Jewish man today. He's not gathered out of all countries. And in my fury and in, my, and in great wrath, and I will bring them again into this place. When, in 1948, what great wrath was poured out on all the world to bring the, the so-called Jews from Germany to so-called back home? There wasn't any. But there will be when blacks, Hispanics, Native Indians get gathered out of the land of the north, a.k.a. Babylon or America, there will be great wrath. It says, I will bring them again unto this place and will cause them to dwell safely. The land of Israel is not safe right now. And they shall be my people. I will be their God and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and for their children after them. Again, the kingdom connotative scripture, and it says we're going to be having children, and the children after those children will have that one way to serve and please Yahweh. All right. Now, verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them, and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them. Again, like another cut. On not having children, is gonna how is he gonna multiply us? Is he gonna take our DNA and clone us? No. How do you multiply? Genesis one. Let's get that. Genesis chapter one verse twenty-five. And uh, sorry, verse twenty-six. And God said, "Let us make man in our image." Or slap you. Let's jump down to verse twenty-eight. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. How did, How is that? We all know. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. All right, so how are we going to be multiplying the land? It's, it's very obvious. Um, now, verse 27. Now, before we continue, let's go to a precept in the New Testament now. Going back to verse 11 of Ezekiel 37, which Paul picks up on in the book of... Um, Ephesians and it, it, it shows because Paul quotes this this prophecy and he applies it to the Gentiles of the time that you know of his time who he's witnessing to who he's giving the gospel which proves those Gentiles are Israelites watch this all right this is Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 wherefore remember and watch the parallel as we read back and forth Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Look at verse 11 of Ezekiel 37. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. Having no hope in Ephesians 2 now. All right. Having no hope and without God in the world. See that? But now in Christ Jesus, Yahweh Shai, ye who sometimes were made afar off, 
made not are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. That's what verse 14 says. Like in verse 26, moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. See that? See the parallels? So that's who that's who these Gentiles are in the book of Ephesians is. That's who the, the whole the Gentiles are, the Israelites. Right? Paul is, is showing you his hand and what's going on. He's quoting prophecy. And he, he can't take prophecy and make up a new breakdown or understanding. No, we can't do that. So he says, Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man. So taking away the transgressions that were, you know, on our charts, on our, you know, our history, he abolished that. And then it says, making of twain, of two, one new man. And what did we read in Ezekiel 37 and 17? It says, um, I'll start at verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick, write upon it for Judah, for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick. They shall become one in thine hand. You see that? Uh, verse 19. Say unto them, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick. They shall be one in my hand. See that? And what does he say in Ephesians 2? For to make in himself of two, one new man, so making peace. Again, that he might reconcile both, both houses, Judah and Israel, unto God, Yahweh. In one body by the cross, having slain the enmity. Remember, we read there's a uh, there's an enmity, there's a vexing between Judah and Israel, according to the book of Isaiah 11, and as we read in Zechariah 11 and 14, there's this vexing, um, there's this uh, enmity, there's a dis disdain between the two kingdoms that through Christ is getting torn down, and it's um, it's evident with the Israelite camps. Both blacks, Hispanics, natives were all coming together. Instead of being two, we're becoming one and coming under this truth. All right. Um, back to Ezekiel 37, verse 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God. They shall be my people. There's no temple. There's no temple in the land right now. How is that fulfillment of prophecy? It can't be. And the heathen shall know. That I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forever. Again, so much cuts, so much edification in the chat in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. Um, so hopefully y'all was taking notes and, and um writing them down with the precepts. It's not there's there's obviously more we could have went into, um, but that's just the basics. It's kind of like you know, the milk to break down this chapter. You know, um, you could check out some other breakdowns on Ezekiel 37. I was just inspired to go over this because of the debate. You know, shout out to Alizar for crushing so-called Dr. Michael Brown again. So um, with that, I hope it was edifying to the body. Um, I want to say Shalom to Israel. Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Shai, Barakatah. All right, Shalom.